I got the opportunity to interview a mid applicant. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Co Gently. In this video, I will be answering to all the questions that you commented under Middlebury videos that I did not address much much sooner. I'll also be reacting to some of the comments just because I just have been ignoring them when in fact I really appreciate it's worth showing that appreciation in one of these Middlebury related videos. As you probably have noticed in the past videos I've been going a little back and forth in that I've been posting videos that I filmed pretty recently. I edited a video that was filmed almost a year ago. As much as I want to be present, I also want to still be connected to Middlebury and help as much as possible because the whole purpose of creating this channel was to really provide prospective mid-applicants or high school students who are interested in applying to Middlebury a lot of resources because back when I was applying to Middlebury, this is something that I noticed was lacking. And so that's pretty much the reason that I started posting a lot about Middlebury, like the dorm tour, language, house living, or like semesters worth of vlogs. I know it's a little cringe for me at least to look back, but I hope it's something that a lot of you guys can take advantage of. It's just really nice to be still connected to Middlebury, not just through this YouTube channel in which I get the comments and I answer those or you know, you guys watch the videos and react to them. It's also after graduating from college, I still get to be within the Middlebury community in that, well, first of all, I got the opportunity to interview a mid applicant a month ago and it was really nice to talk about myself from back in college or before college and also learn about this mid-applicant. The second way was that I'm still friends with people even after graduation. It's not something that is as easy as people would necessarily expect because you all are busy with life and it's not like guys are in the same space in which you can just directly message them and be like, hey, do you wanna grab dinner? Because our lives have transitioned. And this is something that took me a while to recognize and something that I am fully aware of now. So for that, I'm actually really grateful to be connected in Middlebury in these two big ways. Unfortunately though, I will not be attending the 2020 Middlebury graduation ceremony that will take place on May 30th. I'm very satisfied with the way I celebrated my graduation back in February 2021. And so thank you to my old roommates, including my sister for being there. As much as I wanna see the people back on campus, I, I'm just really, I feel kind of rude when I say that I'm done with it, but I am actually done with the graduation ceremony. I'm very happy. <laughs> I think I've talked a lot about myself and how I am so connected to Middlebury. Now I will be responding to three main questions and I also noticed that it's like the college admissions or college application season. I was actually at a concert yesterday to see my friend from school in Germany open a concert which was truly amazing. I, I love her voice and everything. I will actually post another video on that. The world is so, so small and it actually has been seven or eight years since I met her. And to see how we've grown and just have been living our lives since then is, is truly amazing. And at that concert, I met these four high school seniors. I just noticed like wow they're literally five years younger like what was i doing five years ago they've already decided where to go to college Middlebury decisions aren't due until i think this time around in april or may so i just want to give you guys a bit more background on my life at Middlebury. i haven't been to campus nor have i been actively involved with college life. I mean, I graduated from college a year ago. So I will try my best to put myself back in the shoes of Cogently from at least a year ago or a year and a half ago. That's when I was 
on campus. So the first question is, hi, I've heard that Middlebury replaced its Greek life with social houses. How are the social houses similar and different from frats? Do these social houses play a large role in the social scene? Is there a formal recruitment process, etc.? So it is true that Middlebury did replace the whole Greek life with social houses. I think it was actually banned in the 1970s, 80s, or 90s. I can't remember the exact decade, but it was around then. I'm not too familiar with the backstory behind that, but it is true that social houses are now like the Greek life. But it's not necessarily Greek life because my understanding at least of Greek life is that it's very uh, exclusive and there's like little or big, you know, like at UCLA or USC, I think, and a lot of Greek life schools. But at Middlebury, I don't think there is such a thing. And while well, let's actually talk about the recruitment process since I think that might be easier. To be very transparent with you, I was not part of any of the social houses at Middlebury. I always thought of attending one of these like recruitment events. I think there were like three or four events that you had to attend to join a social house, but I just didn't feel like going. I, I got very lazy. So you really have to think about the purpose. Why do you want to go join a social house? I know for sure like this social house called Tavern throws this party every Saturday, sometime every week. And it's very fun and it's not exclusive in that only the members of the social house can go. You can go too if you're not part of it. I had attended quite a few, so it's not necessarily like you get FOMO if you don't join a social house. I think social houses participation also matters when you know that there are friends of yours who are also joining. If you already have a click, it's nice. Alternatively, if you don't know any close friends of yours who are joining a social house, it also doesn't matter because I'm pretty sure you can easily make friends, or at least that's my impression of the people in the social houses. Just so long as you know that you are extroverted enough or social enough to like be out there and be proactive with other people in the social houses, you'll be fine. Overall, do these social houses play a large role in the social scene? Not necessarily. I mean, if I were to put a number to it, it would be 20% because the remaining percentages really take account for student athletes. There's a big share of student athletes on campus. A part of that remaining percentage also goes towards just your friend groups and other clubs and organizations. So it's not necessarily that these social houses are a core substance of what makes a social life function at Middlebury. Now, if you want to be part of Greek life, social houses are a way for you to emulate that. To be honest, I was also pretty sad that there was no Greek life at Middlebury, but then at the end of the day, I keep reminding myself that even if I did attend or even if I did participate in Greek life, I would be probably socially burnt out. That's just my lifestyle. I'm a social introvert. Is that how I describe myself? Obviously, if I meet new people, I'm down to do that, but I'm not gonna be partying every weekend or I have to like live with these people under the same roof because I really like to spend time for myself. I didn't feel the need to like go out there just because I already have had a good group of friends at Middlebury. The second question is, Middlebury is one of the colleges that I really want to attend, especially because of language houses, so I loved your videos. Thank you. Definitely motivated to continue preparing to apply for mid. Thank you so much. I do not know how to read Japanese, so I cannot say this name. But I really appreciate it. Language houses lifestyle is something that I wanted to show and so it's nice to see that someone else is enjoying that. There are two main reasons that I lived in the French language house. One is just wanting to improve French. Second is new lifestyle. About the first point, I had been struggling with French a bit. I know German and I know Spanish, but for some reason I just had so much difficulty time trying to speak French with a good accent and grammar, everything was just really harder than I expected. And so I thought to myself, maybe if I lived in a French language house, I could improve. That is partially true in that I don't know if I improved, but I do really like the policy that you are only to speak the language of that language house. So I didn't speak English at all when I was 
under the roof of the French language house, which is really nice because to be honest, language learning is all about immersion. And if you don't speak the language and there is hardly any other way that you can improve the skills that you want to improve. The second reason was a new lifestyle. I was actually going through ED. The dining halls on campus are unlimited and that you can go to the dining hall anytime you want during those opening hours and get as much food as you want. Now that, that really helped me gain a lot of weight in freshman year and that also impacted my mentality once I noticed that I was gaining weight. So I wanted to learn how to cook for myself and just eat a designated portion in each of those three meals a day. And French language house helped me do that because there was a separate kitchen on the first floor. Basically, I made myself an avocado toast every single morning. <laughs> and then for lunch and or dinner, I would cook lamb steak or pasta or salmon, which was amazing. I don't make that anymore for some reason. I cook other food, but I really am truly, truly grateful that I had this opportunity to challenge myself and try out new things the way I wanted. The last question is from Drew. I know this video is old, but do people go to football games there or are they a big thing? So this video that Drew commented on is the Middlebury College Q&A video from back when I was a sophomore. So it's been three years, I think. So. This is a very difficult question for me to answer simply because I was not a sports person. To be very, very honest with you, the very first college football game that I've ever attended in my whole life was after college graduation at Stanford. Even during that whole football game, I would just stare into blank space. Same with the next football game that I attended that was between Stanford and Berkeley, hence the big game. I truly did not know what was going on. I just don't understand football. But I respect Drew and other people who know about football and are interested in it. From my perspective, it's something that I don't know how to answer to this question. Football is a thing at Middlebury. It's a NASCAC sports. If you guys don't know, NASCAC is New England Small College Athletic Conference. And so Middlebury would compete with other liberal arts colleges or other schools within that conference, like Hamilton College, Colby College, Amherst, Williams. I can't remember like six or seven or eight other schools. It is a sports conference between mostly the liberal arts colleges. I would say if you are into football, definitely go watch it. I mean, there's like a pretty nice football stadium on campus right next to the gym. I went there for like a last minute graduation ceremony for class of 2020 and 2020.5 because we were getting kicked out of campus in November of 2020 and Lori Patton decided to like host a ceremony outside at the stadium to just um, celebrate our graduation with her two dogs. I wasn't a sports person. I didn't attend as many games at Middlebury as I should have. It's really one of the things that I regret not doing at Middlebury is that I wasn't being crunchy enough. I wasn't being outdoorsy. So I didn't ski at all at Middlebury. I would just stay in my dorm while all my friends would go ski in the mountains. Middlebury has its own like ski resort or its own mountains. I just felt so tired and lazy. So if you are planning to attend Middlebury or are already attending Middlebury, make sure to take advantage of that because I recently just found how enjoyable skiing is. I wish I had done that in college to really enjoy myself more. The only sports game that I attended while attending Middlebury was actually men's ice hockey game. That was during my last spring semester of college, so that was spring of 2020. And it was because the guy that I was seeing was about to join the team and his brother was playing there. We just both went <laughs> to watch the game and it was really fun to watch. I love being on the ice. I like ice skating. It's personally something that I enjoyed watching people compete with each other on the ice. If I had known how fun it was to watch a sports game, I would have done that much, much sooner. But I mean, again, I'm still glad that I was able to pick up skiing. Apparently California's big with skiing, like Mammoth, Tahoe, other ski places. Overall, I do think that sports is generally a big thing at Middlebury. I mean, a large portion of the student body is from student athletes. I remember in a micro econ, 
class, half of those students were student athletes. I think mainly from basketball, baseball, rugby. I'm trying to remember the hoodies that the students would wear and then it's, it would say like M and then like a sports. I know that my coworker who also went to Middlebury was part of the soccer team. And so there was this one time when he wore this Middlebury hoodie and it said soccer. So I know soccer is, uh, is something at Middlebury. Too. I don't think the last question was as helpful as Drew, you, or other people might have hoped, but I hope my responses still gave a level of perspective. If you guys want to know more about Moonabury, feel free to comment down below. Again, I will be more active. If you're me, I also understand how much you want to know about Moonabury. I am more than happy to help you with that. I'll see you guys in the next video. I don't know what that's going to be. If you want to keep up with me, my lifestyle, or again, Moonabury, feel free to subscribe to my channel and like this video. All right, see you guys next time. Bye.